watch this is very fundamental, very pertinent to God. He, he, values, his, he values his worship. In fact, uh, when somebody says, I'm jealous about something, you know that is serious to him. Uh, amen. <laughs> yeah. I'm jealous about, about my worship. So that tells you that uh, any, anybody that is wise, a believer that is wise, you focus on that area where God said, this is important to me. Because whatever is important to God, if we, if we do them, they're going to be most beneficial to us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Yeah, if something is important to God and you key into it, it's, it's, good, it's likely that it's going to be most beneficial, very, very beneficial to all of us. Yeah, we may fast and pray, but God said, I like worship. And he surrounded himself with worship. So it, be, uh, it behooves us that we key into what? Into what God likes. Pray the Lord. And I pray that the Lord help us the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. John chapter 4, 23 to 24. It says, but a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father what? in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as those, or this one says, as these to worship him. 24, what does 24, 24 say? God is a spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Pray the Lord. Can you give us the version? Let's start from verse, everybody, we're going to read from verse 22, sorry, 23 to 24. Are we there? Let's go. But if ta and that is when the true worshipper shall worship the Father, in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks soul to worship him. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Worship is defined as the act of attributing a reverent honor and homage to God. Praise the Lord. It's an act of what? Attributing reverent honor, or you can say it's an act of reverencing God, where you reverence Him. Reverent honor, an attribute to who? To God. For example, in Revelation chapter 4, it says that at worthy to receive what? Glory and honor and power. Uh -huh, that kind of a thing. So you are reverencing Him. God is great, God is powerful. His steadfast love, they never see the new every money. So all those attributes you give to God, you are the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Alpha and Omega. So worship is what? It's an act of what? Of reverence in God. Well, we can also say, go beyond that and say uh, it's a composite. It's a, uh, it's a put together. It's a, it's a composite of other things too. Like you you praise him, you are thanking him, you are worshiping him, and all of that. All that can be put, put into what? Into worship. When you praise, you dance, you magnify his name. That is what? It also can be what? Can be worship. When you come to church service, where you are going to what? Worship what? Uh, worship service. And the component of that worship service will be uh, dance, dancing, singing, clapping, and all, all, of, all of that. So that can be part of what? Component of worship. Yeah, worship can also be that we, we, we reverence God, like we were, like we were, but, no, but this time around, we reverence him um, in the way that we, we fear him, amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. In the way of his fear. We have the fear of God. It's a kind of not, not that we are afraid, but it's just that it is imbued in us. It's natural that as we are born again, that thing is dropped in us to be able to 
reverence God by uh, uh, our obedience and our honoring him. Amen? Praise the Lord. So when you bring your offering and your tithe, you, you look at it as what? As an act of what? Of honoring God, an act of worship. Praise the Lord. Amen? So when you do good to somebody, you see it what? As an what? Act of what? Of reverencing, of honoring God. Uh, that's, if we look at it from that angle, it becomes a little bit simpler and broader. Amen? If this floor is dirty and you, you all, you just, as some of us do, you just pass it by. And if I use your leg to scatter it more, praise the Lord. Uh, I think there are some changes, I'm seeing some positive changes around. At least people, they, they will clean and all of that. Otherwise, I see a few of us doing that, uh, including Samuel. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Yeah, not because it's my son, amen. <laughs> no. It's because he's, he's, a, he's a worshiper. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, What? You know, you can, you can ask him the kind of blessing I pronounce on him when we pray together, amen. And the, the, I, he can't miss those blessings. You can't. Amen. Bless of your father. Praise the Lord. And so it's, um, it's like that. So when, when I, when you pass it by and ask the pastor to come and clean it, I, I don't see it as a duty. Amen. And I say, how oh, come members of the church are passing this thing by? I, the pastor, I'm the one still cleaning the floor. No. I see it as an opportunity that you lost and I gained. Blessing. Amen. I see it as an act of what? Act of, uh, act of worship. And I pray that all of us will have that at the back of our minds. So in life, we're not holding too tight to the material things of this life. Amen? We look at them as an act of what? Go, you're the owner of it all. And I keep telling you, if you live to my age and you did nothing special, you're going to be regretting. So don't wait. Amen? Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, because I'm excited that I lived. Is that not? Of course, you can see that I'm, I'm by God's grace, I'm healthy. Is that not? <laughs> yeah? By his grace. No, uh, if, you don't, if, you, if you don't see it, I know that I'm, I'm healthy, I'm lively, I'm vibrant. Amen? Yeah. And my mind is sharp. Praise the Lord. But I humble myself, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the, 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 the worship you give to God, eh, when you need them, when you need it, uh, oh, when you are old, praise the Lord. <laughs> God begin to release upon, upon your health, upon your mind, upon the, everything. Now, when I was 70, and those who came to celebrate me, we were arguing. Ah, I said the church has celebrated me. Why are you coming again? Ah, they said we must come. Up. Praise the Lord. So my wife came and met me where we are arguing. Praise God. Ah, what's, the, what's the problem? I said they are coming to celebrate. Let's add up this. The church already. The church has labored. The church has spent money. The church is not going to be fine. I said, forget about it. We are going to come. May God honor you. Amen. So there is honor for you if you worship. Amen? Amen. You are reverencing God. Every step you are taking, you are saying, okay, I want to honor God. I want to glorify him. That is worship. Amen. Amen. And I pray God will give us the grace Amen. to worship in what? In spirit and Aha, that's what we are talking about. We shouldn't be a church that is just coming, we dress up, we clap our hands, and we go home. Like, no. You come, if I want you to come, it's to, it's to gather strength. That's why you came here. And it's good to appear before God clean and dressed. But that's not the end of it. When you go home, that is where worship starts. The way you talk to your husband, 
the way we talk to our wives, the way we relate really with our children. Do you forgive them easily? You know, all those things, they form the part of the hour of God that is flowing into what? Into your account in heaven. Amen. And I pray God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I will spend that time to describe what worship is. Let's, what are those benefits? We say that God delights in worship and is very sensitive and passionate about it. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5, said, God said, I am what? I am the Lord your God. Thou you shall have no other God before me. You shall not bow down before them. You shall not serve them because of what? I am what? A jealous God. Amen. Amen. You don't read the Bibles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am what? Jealous God. I'm very, very mindful of my worship. Now, if you have that numerous battalion of angels, millions, worshipping you, and you say you are still looking for worshippers, amen, <laughs> that means that is very, like I said, it's very, very, what? It's very important. What have we said so far? God delights in his worship, and he's, he's very passionate and sensitive about his worship. That's what we have saying. And then, of course, he surrounds his throne with worship. And that's, apart from what he said in Exodus, he surrounds his throne with what? With worship non-stop. If you go to chapter 5 of Revelation, it said millions upon millions times millions of angels worship God non-stop. I pray that all of us shall join them because God is looking for who? For worshipers. Looking for a was qualified, looking for a true worshiper. Like we said, true worshiper, those who come around to praise him and yet they go out in awe of God, in the reverence of God, in appreciation of God to honor him and to obey him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Which is the true worship of the Almighty God. So God has said he's very pertinent about his worship. And we can physically surround himself what we worship. And on earth, he has chosen us to become true worshippers. I pray all of us shall be true worshippers, even today in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray the Lord. Amen. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are the custodians of worship. Yeah, all, all over the place, people are celebrating some other things. They celebrate all kind of things. Um, when it comes to is it Halloween now, huh? everybody's was animated. When it comes to football, everybody what? Everybody's charged up. They are buying a, what do you call, a popcorn, beer, a lot of noise. Praise the Lord. And some of you also celebrate uh, all these football teams in, in the Europe. In fact, there was a day that the, this church was almost uh, empty <laughs> because of soccer, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and those who came, they went to that room. I'm sure they went to that room to be. Uh, we celebrate all kind of things, but we are the custodians, Amen. Because so that somebody, they, if I give you this thing to keep, uh, you become what? Uh, amen. <laughs> it's a trust, but then so, so we're the one. We're the one to protect worship. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We're the one to ensure that worship goes up to God. He's looking for it. And it's not good that he has created the earth and not is, not is coming back to him. He's a business, as true a businessman. He wants something to come back to him. And I pray that in our churches, in our homes, worship will never cease. Amen. Goodness will never cease. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And please let's be polite to one another. It's very good at home, is that not? <laughs> Let's humble ourselves. 
uh, those things tolerate at the place of work? Why can't you tolerate them at home? Huh? Because you want to create a conducive atmosphere, is that not? For worship. Same thing in the church. If I relate with you, my brain is working. Praise the Lord. My what? <laughs> yeah, I'm creating something. If I stoop down to greet your children and hug them and carry them, my what? Yeah, amen. I'm not look, my brain is not working to get money from you. Amen. I'm only a you see, I mean, I really appreciate you. Amen? Praise the Lord. That you left other churches and where you came where? Amen? I've not started. Praise God. No, I'm joking. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God bless your ushers. So we'll just go through why, why we, the benefits, uh, amen, of worship. God is a jealous God. He surrounds himself with worship. On this earth, he has chosen us. Uh, he said, this book have I formed for myself. He shall do what? Show forth my praises. So you are formed to show forth the praises of God. Even when we sin, God still brought us back again. The Bible says we are translated from what? Darkness away. It's marvelous light. That we may do what? Show forth the praises of him who has brought, done that for us. That darkness was his marvelous light. Uh, so we are a royal priesthood, we are a holy nation, peculiar people. Like we said earlier, whatever God is passionate or, pe- or pertinent about could be highly rewarding. And uh, if you can key into it, the better. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we, we just look at the benefits of worship and that will, that will be the end of it. Number one, it affords us the opportunity to celebrate God. Is that not? To do what? Celebrate God's goodness and his attributes. God, you are holy. God, you are righteous. You are perfect. You are powerful. Can we have those points there so that we just go to them and we worship God? Just to help you. What does praise and worship do for us? It helps us to what? It gives opportunity to what? To celebrate God's goodness and his attributes. At home, we are too busy, is not it? Always busy. Especially women, amen. There is something they have to do in the kitchen. As they are bringing the plate down, they are putting out, they take that, put it down somewhere else. They, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. As they are cleaning the fridge, they are cleaning the floor, cleaning the floor, cleaning the stove. Amen. They are arranging the freezer, the free. May God help us in Jesus' name. May the Lord help us. And, and the men are busy changing channels. Uh, flipping channels. Uh, praise the Lord. We are too, we are too busy. Uh, and anybody can be too busy. You, anybody. You can just create something for yourself. Just. And may God help us. But when you come to church, it gives what opportunity what to worship God. So, and it's not good that when you come to this a place like this, you are still you finish business at at home. You are bringing the thing, the tablet to the church, and you are watching whatever you're not supposed to be watching. Ah, I pray that God will help us, because opportunity comes like that within some seconds. A word of God is coming to you. If you are distracted, the fellow will have missed it. You will not miss your day of blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, it gives, it gives a believer victory without what? A fight. Uh, number two, what does it give us? A, a victory what? Without a fight. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse what? Verse 22. The Bible says, when they were beginning to sing and to praise, what happened? 
the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. And what did they do? They destroyed themselves. Amen? Amen. What did they do? They destroyed themselves. They say ambush, where well, it could be that confusion happened, and I, they just start fighting each other, and they finish themselves. That's why the Bible says, vengeance is what? Ah, let me fight for you. And what are we fighting about anyway? There's nothing. If we're going to fight, uh, maybe somewhere else, not even in the church. God help us in Jesus' name. Not in, the, not in the church. Because we're supposed to be our brother's keepers. And they find one another to come up and be strong and be powerful. Not in the church. Say, not in our church. No, ch- no fight here, amen? God help us in Jesus' name. And not in our homes also. Victory without a fight. Number three. Heavenly give us what? Worship gives us heavenly attention in prayer. That's why we say enter what? Into his gates with thanksgiving and to his court with praise. So as believers, you don't enter into God's presence asking him. You go to there praising what? Praising him. Amen. Yeah, you can be doing that at the outer court. By the time you get closer to God, what do you see there? 24 7 what? Worship. And those there will carry your matter before the Lord. They are worshippers. So by the time you go there complaining and grumbling, no, no, it's no attention. So this month we're not going to grumble, amen? We're not going to complain. No matter what is happening to us, we're going to worship the Almighty God. In fact, God punished this life for what? For grumbling. And for believers, we, we, we must have passed that level of knowledge. Amen. Amen. That you don't enter God's place, presence, g- grumbling. Uh, God, see what you did for uh, Sister Lisi. Well, what about myself? That kind of thing. Uh, amen. <laughs> no, you're not making any requests. Praise the Lord. You're not asking for anything. You are grumbling. You are complaining. As good as it's good physically in your body, as you feel good, it does not work in the kingdom of God. In the spiritual, you don't go there grumbling. And you don't also go to the kingdom of God muted. You just go there, you just say, mm, mm, mm. No. You must say something. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you are not praising God, or you are asking God, or you are dealing with the devil. Amen? So you have no time to waste in the spirit realm at all. As you pray, need not to pray. By the grace of God, you are before the Lord. You do what is proper. You enter there with what? With thanksgiving, with the worship of the Almighty. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, worship attracts God's glory. We saw that in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. The Bible says, when the priests are worshiping God, that is the dedication of the, of the temple, what happened? The glory of God filled the temple. Uh, filled it with a cloud. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled what? The house of God. I pray the glory of God will fill our house. Amen. And we are the temple of God. May the glory fill our temple in Jesus' name. Amen. And our homes also a place of worship. May glory fill our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Now if we use other languages at home, like coarse language, uh, poor language. It's not a cause number, but it's, it's a very poor language. Amen. Language that don't edify, they hang in the air. Amen. Where do they hang? Yeah. And they give ammunition to the devil to use. Okay. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. In the front here and the back there, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. 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 It's uh, departed. It, gives up, it's up, it's, uh, has power to deliver from what? From captivity. Amen. Paul and Silas, when they were doing what? When they were praising, what happened? Their power came down. In fact, God visited them. And there was what? An earthquake, and they were set free. 
It is therapeutic. It says that it has the power to touch the mind, to touch the feelings. Amen? The mind, the feelings, and the emotions. That is why you have people, therapists, they talk, they talk to people, and that, that's, what, that's, how they get, that's what they do. They talk, therapists talk, and then to bring healings and all of that into the system. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Therapeutic, when you, those things that we say are very good, they, they feel, uh, 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 there's a way to, the Bible says, Mary heart does what? Do it good like medicine, but a broken spirit drives what? The bones. Amen? Number seven was the last one. According to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, worship is a form of what? Of sacrifice, which God remembers in the time of what? In the time of trouble. Remember that. It's not, you don't get into trouble for thanking God or praising Him. You have to do that now. Amen. It's a form of worship which you do and all of that. Today, let us worship greatly. For great is the Lord and what? And greatly to be praised. Amen? Amen. Great is the Lord and great to be praised. This, this, the message may seem simple, but... That is the essence of the, of the Christian life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's what it takes to live as a Christian. Those simple things, God help us with them in Jesus' name. So that it's already complex out there. We shouldn't make things complex for ourselves. Let's go praising God. Let's start to worship God powerfully. Divide our prayer time into two. Half of it for worship. And the other part for what? For asking. Never go before God grumbling. Never go before God commanding him around. God, didn't you see that I'm hungry? Where is the food? So the fellow may die in hunger. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Rather, let's go to God and say, Lord, I thank you because the earth is yours. Are what? And his fullness, they are full. Ah, you are, can't go hungry. No way. Because I have a father where? On the throne. Who supply needs. You gave money in those days. Today you are going to supply my need. Amen? Amen? You don't go and say, God, don't you see that I'm hungry? No, we don't do that. I mean, God help us. They're very simplistic, but it's, we don't do that. Today, let us worship God greatly. Let's show forth his praise. Amen? Bible says we should make his praise how? Glorious. Hallelujah. Let us start it today. Glorious. Dance and be sweating. Glorify God. Because God li likes it. God loves it. He made provision for it in heaven and on earth. He has called us. What are we waiting for? And Bible says when we praise God, what comes down? Blessing what? And the earth does what? Yield what? High increase. The scripture cannot be broken. So why would you add all those little nuances, all those small, small things to distract our attention? Let's focus on God and I pray the Lord. The God who has called us for blessing will bless us. Amen. And he'll use the provision he has made to do what? To what? To bless us. If we go out, outside the provision, there's not that, uh, there's not that thing we're going to get. There's not that thing we, we, uh, any other thing that we're going to be using than what he has given to us. He has given us the provision. Let us, let us what? Let's, let's key into it and all of, all of that. Wherever God finds our people willing to worship in truth and in spirit, what does he do? He manifests his presence, he manifests his glory, and he manifests his blessings. Amen? It's a truism. Let's hold to it. That's what God does. Amen? He manifests those things and blessings. As worshippers, we must draw nearer to God in spirit and in truth. I mean, we must worship God in spirit, what? And in truth, paying attention to his word. Amen? Amen? You don't downplay the work of God. You don't downplay the will of God. You don't downplay the service of God. You don't eat all your money. You don't honor God with even a dime. And uh, you want him to bless you. Or he has already blessed you with heaven. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. If he doesn't do anything anymore, you are, you are very okay. Just wait and get old and go and meet him there. But if you want to enjoy this earth, you want to live a vibrant life, 
a life of abundance, a life of increase, a life of divine health, you must key into what? Into the promises of God. But anybody that thinks, oh, I'm satisfied with this, where I am now, God is going to, God may be actually quitting the following one he gets to heaven because I have so much more for you. So where you, are, where you are now, you have not started. Amen. But you begin to honor the law with your life, with your time, with your money, you will see God. May God respond to you. Amen. This month, possibly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But like we said, to be a true worshiper, you must marry your life into the word of God. Somebody said, and I quote, the subject of music is not exempt from the scrutiny of the scriptures. And those who hold to the inspiration and the authority of the Bible must apply the principles of God's word to their music as consistently as they would to any other areas or any other subject. Amen? Praise the Lord. So worship is very important and the way we comport ourselves, what we are singing, and all of that, the way we play and our seriousness is very, very important. Let's reflect the scriptures.